Welcome back to Vigo, fast vegan and vegetarian for those on the go. The Pod Magazine show featuring items found on our healthy grocery store program of the same name. Chef Brian creates cool recipes exclusively for you using only a simple ingredients and lots of love. His famous no measure style makes creating great meals incredibly fast and truly a joy. So here he is, Vigo Chef Brian. Vigo and you're done. Hey everybody, welcome to Vigo. Hi, I'm Chef Brian. Welcome to today's episode. Hey, if you like this podcast, make sure that you share, like, and subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you tell a friend, a neighbor, and a loved one about it. And uh, today we've got a great episode. We've got some really cool recipes. We've got some cool company reviews, product science. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, let's drop right into it. And today, our secret ingredient is... Cacao butter. Nothing beats the beautiful flavor of this incredible treat, which you can make all kinds of chocolate delights with. And we have an amazing recipe. We are going to make homemade chocolate turtles. Remember those old favorites? Oh, yeah, we're going to make them for you. But before we do it, let's investigate the key ingredient in making it cacao butter. Now, cacao butter is perfect for creating all kinds of homemade chocolate treats thanks to its creamy texture and delicate aroma. Cacao butter is truly our essential ingredient for today and it gives chocolate its silky quality and made from these cacao beans and if you've ever seen these beans before they're absolutely just fascinating and when you peel them open you have this pure unfiltered cacao butter loaded with these fatty acids and antioxidants and aside from uh, cooking and baking with cacao butter you can also do all kinds of things for the cosmetics industry but for today we're going to stay focused in on cacao butter and the edible qualities Now this is a plant-based fat which is pressed right out of the cacao bean and when that's where you get the cacao butter from. And it's then it's basically fermented and separated from the outer husk, the hulls, and it's comprised of about just over 50% fat or cacao butter. And the remnants is the fibrous powder which then is dried and made into that chocolate that we know as cacao powder. The goal is to separate the fibrous powder so that you can get higher levels of the fats and the antioxidants. The beans are then fully ground into chocolate liqueur which then is pressed to remove the butter content. So the cacao butter is an essential ingredient in many chocolates and it has a lot of health benefits besides giving it a boost of flavor and silkiness that we love in our chocolates. So first, it's a very good source of fatty acids. Two, it's an antioxidant powerhouse. And three, it helps with the skin. Now, on the food side, uh, it's considered one of the most stable fats available, and it's rich in omega-6 and omega-9, which supports overall health. And because it's so nutrient-dense, the cacao bean and the cacao butter in particular is a great source of antioxidants, which boosts the immune system, is known for heart health, and helps to lower inflammation. And uh, for me, I used to make a lot of different ganache chocolates. It's very important that you go very low and very, very slow. That's how you're going to get the best quality at the end of the day. Now, let's take a look at this recipe of these turtles. Now, the cacao butter that we're going to be using is from our Eco Ideas brand, which is part of our Vigo lineup. And as you know, on the Vigo lineup, the Vigo food products, we have over 1,200 items available for you. And uh, we have an entire family of cacao products available, including cacao nibs, which we're going to be using in a future recipe, cacao butter, which is going to be for today's recipe, which is going to be the unrefined cacao butter. So we have all of these guys available on our Vigo Healthy Food Program. And uh, just to give you an idea how uh, economical it is when you buy it on the Eco Ideas uh, Vigo Program, 
just to give you a, a, a taste of this, um, we have so many products that are available, but uh, the cacao powder, 227 gram bag, uh, regular retail around $10.98. Our members only pay $8.78. The cacao beans, that's the whole beans, again, $10.98 for 227 gram bag. Our members only pay $8.78. The organic fair trade cacao butter that we're going to be using in today's recipe, a 227 gram bag. These are these uh, cacao butter chunks. Uh, you find that in the stores for around $13, and uh, on our Vigo program, it's like $10.38. And lastly is the cacao powder, uh, this rich, dark brown chocolate powder. Uh, a 454-gram bag is around $20 retail. Our members only pay $16. Again, to get all that price list and the beautiful catalog about all the products we're talking about here on the Vigo Food Show, <clears throat> you can just slide over to my website at B gangel.com and on the home page you've got the links where you can download and take a look at the beautiful 48 page gorgeous catalog and also the entire price list which tells you not just the sizes and the item numbers for you to order making it super easy but also the retail and full disclosure it tells you the 20% off and uh, believe it or not there's no membership fees you can just call the phone number 905-475-5060 if you're in Canada and we have a toll free number 1-888-735-7258 and tell them any of the products that you want to buy say i'd like to buy it on the vigo program and they'll automatically get you 20 percent off the top you're going to absolutely love it all right let's take a look at this incredible recipe on these organic uh, fair trade cacao butter turtles and uh, so the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need some sort of nut as the base and when we're making the turtles type chocolates we are going to be using walnuts that are soaked and dried and uh, what you do is you take out uh, two or three pieces of walnuts and you cluster them together and I like to put this all on a Teflex sheet and that's that non-stick sheet that you use in your dehydrators if you're going to be doing these guys um, any other way then basically you can also use uh, parchment paper it works just as well now remember we're not going to be dehydrating these guys or cooking them um, uh, the finished product we're going to dump right into the freezer so make sure the tray fits easily into your freezer unit and make sure you got space for it because you can't tilt it in any direction you have to put it in level and horizontal ready to go right into the freezer Okay, so once you group the little chunks of walnuts together, and maybe I may make 12 turtles on one tray, okay? If you're gonna be using smaller uh, turtles, then you might get a little bit more. If you want larger chocolates, then obviously a little bit less. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually drizzle over the top of these little clusters that we've created a caramel sauce. And here is how we are going to make a amazing caramel sauce. So in a small, uh, heavy uh, pot you know, that you would normally do little stews and little sauces in, what we're going to do is we're going to put in some soaked dates. To make that, I take a little bit of uh, boiling water and I put it into a little cup and I uh, break open my dates and I get rid of the pit inside and I drop them into the hot water. I let them sit there for a few moments and it softens them up nicely, drain away the soak water, and then I dump it into a little blender cup. So you use one of those little bullet cups, those uh, little blender cups, and uh, they have the ones that the Ninja brand, so there's lots of them. Any of them will do nicely. And you want to use the S cutting blade, and that's the one that we use for blending and whipping. And then I may put in two or three, remember I'm the no measure guy, so you know, you do it kind of freestyle. You're going to put in a little bit of maple syrup. You're going to put in a little bit of our Eco Ideas coconut sugar, and you can use the icing sugar if you want. I like it because it's low glycemic index, and that's also available in our Vigo program. You're going to need a little bit of vanilla, so I'll put in a little bit of a vanilla pod, and I'll score it down the side, and I'll scrape it out. About a quarter of a vanilla pod will do just beautifully, and that beautiful black paste, you drop that in, and that'll get you that rich, real organic vanilla flavor that you're looking for. A little bit of our uh, pink salt from our Frequency brand, so a little bit of a hit of that pink salt from the Frequency brand, and then a little tablespoon or so of your favorite nut milk. All you do is you just blend this guy up and make it nice and smooth, and then what I will do with it is I'll put it into the uh, bottom of the pot and I'll turn it on to just warm setting, and I mean just warm. 
just enough that once all of it's blended in the blender cup, I put it into the pot and all I'm doing is I'm just heating it up just slightly. This is one of the secrets, okay? And then you take it out and you drizzle it over top of your little clusters of walnuts that you have on the parchment paper or on the Teflex sheets. Okay, now that they're coated, drop that into your freezer. Within a few minutes, the caramel sauce will harden up and will actually hold together the walnuts. Now you have the center of your turtles. Now you make your chocolate ganache. So now out comes our secret ingredient for today, which is our beautiful cacao butter. And I'll put in one or two chunks of the cacao butter into that pot that I was using. So I'll use that same exact pot uh, that I make my little sauces and stews. And it's just a little half quart pot I'm using. And I'll put in one or two chunks of the cacao butter. I'll put in uh, one or two tablespoons of the cacao powder from Eco Ideas on our Vigo program. And then I'll put in a small amount, maybe about a teaspoon or so of the fermented coconut oil, which is also available on the Vigo program. I'll take out another quarter of that vanilla pot and scrape out that beautiful paste and drop that in. I'll hit it with a little pinch of the pink salt. And again, I'll turn the uh, pot and hit, put the temperature on the just low setting. You do not want to go above about 115 degrees. So you want to make it really, really slow and low here. Low temperature, go slow, you'll get much better results. Now, another secret. When you're going to do it, you do not use any instruments to blend those five ingredients together. No spoons, no spatulas, no slotted spoons, and no metal utensils, nothing. It's only through the swirling action of the pot as you take it and swirl the ingredients around and they will blend together slowly as they melt down. That's what's going to get you this beautiful, silky, great quality ganache chocolate that you're looking for. About halfway through the process, add in a little bit more of the cacao powder to thicken it up. And by dropping it in, once the other ingredients have melted, you actually create a little bit of a thickening agent. And it thickens the chocolate up just a little bit so much. You want it so that it swirls around in the pot, but doesn't splash back. And that tells you, they call it the splash test, that if it doesn't splash back, and you see these nice, almost like rippling waves of chocolate, and it's all loosened up, then you know that the chocolate is ready to go. Now you pop out the uh, walnut clusters, which are now held together with this little blob of this gorgeous caramel sauce that's thickened and hardened up. And now you take the chocolate and you slowly drizzle it out of the pot over the top of the clusters. And almost like magic, they start to form those beautiful shapes that are so reminiscent of those elegant turtles chocolates that we love so much that we receive at holiday times and then you're going to notice something else almost instantly because the caramel is almost frozen and the walnuts are frozen the chocolate hardens almost instantaneously now i like to go back and do a second pass of drizzling a little bit more chocolate over the top and you get almost like a double and tripling effect and you see these beautiful rippling uh, images and, and shapes in the chocolate and it just is absolutely a delight to work with. Pop them back into the freezer and then let them harden up for a few more moments and then get ready to present these gorgeous, quick and easy, what we call Galapagos turtle chocolates. They're absolutely decadent, creamy, smooth, incredible flavor, beautiful texture. Definitely give this recipe a try. I'm going to post some pictures up on our Instagram account, Vigo Food Show, where you can see the Galapagos chocolate turtles there, and I'll have the recipe posted for you along with photos of the finished products. You're going to absolutely love this recipe. Definitely, definitely give this guy a try. You're going to love it. Now it's time for a little bit of a company review. Mate Factor. And this is an incredible brand of Herba Mate Teas. They're a natural energizer. They're certified organic. There's no artificial flavors. Uh, it's unbleached. 
they use these extra large tea bags to contain the herba mate. It's a truly mineral rich tea. It contains uh, naturally chromium and copper and iron, and manganese, potassium and zinc. And I got to tell you, it comes in so many different flavors like the Brazilian green tea, mocha mint tea. Oh my goodness, doesn't that sound incredible? Dark roast, cardamom chai, lemon ginger, cinnamon rooibos, the uh, green tea ginseng, and they have the earl green and of course the extreme green and uh, these are uh, boxes uh, that are under the mate factor brand there's 20 tea bags in a box so it's about 150 grams of loose tea equivalent and uh, you know the herba mate is sweeping across uh, the world so many countries have jumped onto the bandwagon of using herba mate teas and so I want to talk a little bit more about Herba Mate because um, a lot of people really don't know too much about Herba Mate and really what it is and, and how it works. So this is from the Mate Factor. It's a plant which is really a tree. It's an evergreen from the holly family that grows in subtropical forests in South America. The Herba Mate tree uh, stands around six to eight meters tall. It can even reach up to 15 meters in height. And there's many different species. Um, you know, actually, believe it or not, there's over 280 different species found in South America alone, 60 which naturally occur in southern Brazil. But only three species are used in the Mate industry. It's based on the amount of xanathine alkaloids in the leaves of the herb mate that, uh, that directly influences its flavor. Also, the quality of the soil has a factor in its flavors as well. And of course, uh, these guys from Mate Factor are producing incredibly smooth and mild flavors in their teas and go from strong bitterness uh, to which may probably have a higher xanthine content to ones which are nitrogen rich in the topsoil, which then have a milder bitterness to them and give them that more smooth flavor. Claim to fame of the Herba Mate is its ability to produce this incredible energy factor. And that's what we're talking about right now is the incredible energy boost that you get by using the Herba Mate teas. Yes, it is rich in many different minerals, but also very rich in different types of vitamins, including vitamin A, C, E, and the energy factors, B1, B2, niacin, B3, B5, in fact, almost the entire B complex family is found in the Herba Mate's. Herba Mate has also been known for helping with weight management because of its thermogenic burning effect, which helps the body to release excessive calories as heat rather than storing it as fat. And so when you have that boost of energy, you're gonna absolutely love it. So it provides, and this, bright smooth flavor which in itself is so satisfying and yet provides that amazing hit of energy which we love and uh, you'll notice that the herba mate is usually served up in these little round gourds <clears throat> and uh, i actually have one of them and i'll post a picture of it again on our instagram account at vigo food show and uh, the gourd is <clears throat> made of a, a, almost like a wood type of product and it's in a bulb air a bulb shape it usually comes with a flat bottom it's naturally found they scrape them out and then they put a little stainless steel lip around the edge and then the herba mate goes in boiling hot water goes in you cover it with a little cover so that you don't lose any of those essential oils. One of the key things I learned uh, when I was studying herbs <clears throat> way back in the day was no matter what kind of tea you're making, always cover it so you don't lose those essential oils. They don't vaporize out and they stay in the tea itself. After it steeps for a couple of moments, then the tea is ready to be drinking. And uh, I have to tell you, the flavor of it is so beautiful. I like to actually sweeten it a little bit myself, a little bit of the um, coconut sugar. I like the icing coconut sugar from Eco Ideas on our Vigo program. I take out only about a quarter of a teaspoon and I'll mix it into the gourd with the Herba Mate tea. Uh, the amount that you use in your servings is totally dependent on how strong you like it. 
I like to use about a half a teaspoon up to three quarters of a teaspoon. That's just enough for me to get the beautiful release of the flavors and get the energy and all of the health benefits. And uh, I have to tell you, once you'll try a few of the flavors that are on our Vigo food program from Eco Ideas, once you try a few of them, you're going to absolutely fall fall in love with the Herba Mate teas. And uh, to me, it's like it's like my daily dose of sunshine. I never miss a day without my Herba Mate tea. And uh, <clears throat> there are so many different varieties that are available uh, on our program. And um, the, they are so uh, economical. It's just incredible. The beauty of the Vigo food program is you can order onesie twosies and you can try a whole variety of them. So you don't have to buy caseloads of it and then uh, later go, oh, wow, well, I'm not too fond of that particular flavor and I really like that other flavor better. Well, the beauty of the Vigo food program, the re reason it was designed this way, was for you to be able to try onesie twosies and uh, give this guy a go. So definitely try from Mate Factor the Herba Mate teas. Try two or three different types. Give them a try. I promise you, you will definitely definitely not be disappointed with that guy. So I hope you enjoyed uh, that on the uh, Herba Mate and now we're going to drop into our great featured recipe for this episode. All right, our featured recipe for this episode of Vigo is going to be bacon. Fake bacon. That's right. We are going to make vegetarian vegan bacon for you and we're going to show you how to do it. So let's dive into it right now. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we have to decide uh, what is going to be the base for our bacon. And you have two choices here. Choice number one is we can use eggplant and choice number two is we can use carrots. Either one will work beautifully. The secret is how you slice the uh, eggplant or the carrot up and second, the marinade that you're going to use to uh, uh, really impart the flavor of uh, bacon. Uh, one of our, you know, 35 years ago, one of my most favorite foods. Um, but now that I've learned how to make bacon, uh, uh, you'll never go back to the old ways of doing things. And that's the beauty of when you start making that switch to vegan and vegetarianism. Uh, you know, you'll find that if you do it right and you go nice and slow and impart some of these amazing recipes that we do here on the Vigo Food Show, I think that, you know, over time, you'll never go back to your old ways because the new ways are so much better. They're so much better for the body, but they're so much more tasty. So for eggplant, I use a mandolin and, uh, you know, always practice uh, all safety precautions when you're using a mandolin. Um, and you don't want any red food dye, if you know what I mean, in your recipes. That doesn't uh, appeal to me. So always practice all of the safety uh, precautions uh, that are from the manufacturer of your mandolin. And you slice the eggplant into large slices about a quarter inch thick. So and don't be fooled into thinking that thin slices are better. Thicker slices work much better, and you'll understand why as we, as we progress into the recipe. Now... If you're doing carrots, then I get a peeler and I'll actually take it and I'll slice the carrots across the grain. And the first few slices are pretty thin and not very wide. So you have to use the thicker part of the carrot. If you're using the big horse carrots, those guys work even better because you can get nice thick slices right off of the first strip. Right, boom, 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 out they come and they're ready to go. So you got these big, fat, wide strips of carrots or with the mandolin, about a quarter inch thick slices of the uh, eggplant. The carrots, you don't need anything else to the carrots. The eggplants, you have to slice them again, uh, you know, so you've got about an inch and a half to two inch width slices because the eggplant is so much wider. Now you put it into a stainless steel bowl and then you have to make the marinade. So the marinade, um, I use, the key ingredient here is the Eco Ideas Coconut Marinade. That's that coconut sauce that is available on the Vigo Food Program. So use the coconut sauce or the coconut marinade. That is my secret ingredient, about a half a cup or so. Then you're going to need some good quality liquid smoke. So there are a few brands out there. You have to shop around uh, for a brand of liquid smoke that is natural liquid smoke. You don't want any artificial flavors. Next, you're going to need some sort of sweetener. And to the offset and cut the flavor of the marinade, you're going to need a little bit of coconut sugar. So I'll use the granule of the coconut sugar. About, again, about an equal portion. So if it's I'm using a half a cup of the uh, a coconut marinade, a half a cup of coconut sugar. And that's all you need. You mix it together. 
blow the marinade over top of your slices of carrot or your slices of eggplant and let it marinate overnight. So mix it around with your hands and massage it in gently and then put it into the fridge, cover it with a little bit of paper so uh, it doesn't uh, smell up the fridge and also it keeps all of the aromas and the essential volatile oils in place. Then the next day you take out your slices and you lay it into a Teflex sheet for a dehydrator. Or you can do this in the oven. Uh, again, you're going to have to be especially cautious of the temperature and keep it under 120 degrees. Okay, You don't want to bake it. You just want to dehydrate it and remove the moisture. And that's the reason that the slices were so thick to start with, is that a lot of the fiber is being held together with moisture. And as you dehydrate it, you're going to find that it shrinks down to almost nothing. It's going to be extremely thin, and then it's going to become very brittle, just like bacon. And the beauty is, as the fiber loses its moisture, it's going to be replaced with the intensified flavors of the marinade of the coconut uh, marinade liquid, coconut sauce, the smoke, and the coconut sugar. It will actually smell and just like bacon. The entire room will fill with this incredible aroma, which is just so appetizing for me. Now, you're going to dehydrate this guy down in a regular oven about two hours and in a dehydrator, four hours, and then you let it cool. Now here's my secret. Halfway through the dehydrating process, halfway through, so an hour if you're doing it in an oven, two hours into the process if you're using a dehydrator, you actually take the strips out and you remarinate it for two more minutes. And then you take them back, flip them the other direction upside down, and then continue the drying process. And then when you're finished, out it comes, and it's double the intensified flavor. It's crispy. It actually looks like bacon. It's got the same aroma as bacon. And as, as almighty as my witness, it tastes just like bacon. What I like to do with it is I'll take it once it's completely dried up. I'll put it into a glass jar, snap a lid on it. I'll keep those strips in the uh, fridge and they keep beautifully for up to about a week. I'll take half of it and crumble it into little bacon-like bits, so I call them bacon bits, and I'll put it into a little mason jar, and I'll cap it, and I'll put that into the fridge and use that liberally on my salads. And then anywhere where you would love to have that beautiful uh, texture and flavor and taste of bacon, you can pull out those strips, and they're actually completely ready to go. This is truly a hallmark recipe. You definitely must give this guy a try. Faken, you will absolutely, truly fall in love with it. It'll be a mainstay in your vegetarian and vegan recipes as well. And we'll post pictures of the Faken on our uh, Vigo Food Show Instagram account so you can take a look at that as well. Wow, I really hope that you enjoyed uh, today's exciting recipes. I hope you get a chance to give them a try. Uh, if you want more information about our Vigo Food Program, again, just slide over to our uh, website at bgangel.com. And on the homepage, we have links to take you to the beautiful 48-page catalog and that gorgeous price list as well. And if you have any questions you'd like to pose to Chef Brian, by all means, just drop them. Send them to me at bgangel777 at gmail.com, and I'd be glad to answer your questions. Until next time, blessings to you all, and remember, Vigo, and you're done. Bye for now.